there you go. Performance. You're a dick. No, no, big ass. You're a dick. No, no, big ass. You're a dick. Dick. Oh. dick. It probably dick. wasn't appropriate, dick. but. <laughs> Bye. You're a dick. Asking dick. me for dick. a face dick. dick. What a dump. Wait. I like can't hear anymore about big ass because he's <laughs> pissing me off and <laughs> him because he's. I think everybody could use a break after that. Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? Why do you keep doing this to me? Why are you interested in a man who doesn't have a neck and has even less of a respect towards his girlfriend? Why do you care about a girl who somehow cannot leave this Oompa Loompa slash Goomba of a human being? Why are we here? Just to suffer? What is wrong with us that we must sit down and watch a golden bowling ball ruin his life on national television? Hi, I'm 16 Leo and today I'm here to tell you that it's okay. I too. I'm a big Ed person who's relapsed. What do you what do you call people who relapse? Alcoholics? Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be drinking because honestly, I cannot believe that I'm one still talking about big Ed and two, he's still doing the same thing that he's done before. Today we're picking up where we left off. It's part two of the tell all. We're going to see if he actually had anything to say with Rose. And uh, we're also going to talk about his relationship with Liz. Spoiler alert. They suck, both of them. And it's up to you to decide who sucks more. Please leave it in the comments. I would like to tally your vote. Can we have like a little meter at the bottom to see who sucks more? We're even right now. We need to see who is way, way worse because I think these two together are like cotton candy and oil. It's just a bad combination. Have you ever had popcorn with ass cheeks? It's really, really disgusting is what I'm saying. This is a disappointment. And uh, I am so sorry that you have to watch it. But before we start, uh, if you want to subscribe, that would be really good. We're on our way to 600,000 big babies. This is where we started the whole thing in the kitchen. I might even bring Fluffs back for a few episodes. And while we're at it, do follow me at 16leo underscore my Instagram. That way you can tell me about Big Ed and everything that he does. Because everybody always tags me in Big Ed stuff as if I know the man personally. I would love to, but he doesn't want to meet me because he hates me. I just want to be closer to you, buddy. I want to talk to you and tell you that it's okay. I'm lying. I don't, I don't want to live in a world where Big Ed is the only thing that I see day in, day out. Don't you sometimes wish you could just jump into a virtual reality world where Big Ed doesn't exist from time to time? Actually, that is a very attainable goal with our next sponsor, High Rise. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the metaverse. Well, High Rise is a metaverse experience you can try out on your mobile device that is a social first app built to support and inspire design content. That means that all the experiences, rooms, games, and parties, you name it, are all created by the users or citizens to create different experiences. This game is a really adorable and cute way to chat in real time with other high-rise citizens. You can exchange items, play games, and explore your own world. I like that high-rise allows you to express your creativity with 40,000 unique items to build your space and your avatar. Check out my little Leo. So I've partnered with high-rise to get you my favorite item, 16 Leo's black leather jacket, valued at five bucks for free. Look, I love the jacket because I love black. It's a great color. I'm a fashion and look at them spikes. Once you download the game through my description link, use my code 16 underscore Leo, but you have to be quick because it's only available until the 27th of January. There's a ton of stuff to check out in game. So use the link in the description and download slash join high rise today. Build your creative experience, make friends and have fun. So yeah, part two of the tell all they're together, but they're broken up, but they're still engaged. And there's a bombshell that I don't want to tell you because you are going to drop your panties when you hear about it. Let's watch. Ed always asking me for uh, FaceTime. You want to uh, video call with him to FaceTime. Oh my God, I don't know if that woman is yawning or actually like worried in the background. She could have either been like, <gasps> Big Ed FaceTime or oh, what's to do? Either of those would be correct. Big Ed breaking up with Liz and then going to hit on other girls is not new. Him doing it with his ex fiance Rose? That's slimy. That is really slimy. We're starting off with a bang here, and Big Ed is already trying to go back to the exes. So Ed said that he didn't, hasn't spoken to you at all, and then now he's saying he can't remember if he spoke to you. 
Okay, I'm sorry. If this man doesn't have Alzheimer's or, I'm sorry, some sort of like head injury, then he could probably remember texting an ex because I don't know if uh, you need some like photographic memory to know this, but I think anybody texting their ex should remember. And if they don't, then you got to leave them. I'm sorry, uh, but this 10% Big Ed side for being more of the douchebag. But also, Liz, come on. I am so on her side for most things. But the fact that she's still with Big Ed after knowing all this, it's like someone who goes on a ride and then throws up and is like, Ugh, I keep getting sick. Can I have another ticket? I didn't. That's not true. Because he already messaged me and I have um, a screenshot. We have that screenshot. Oh, she got proof. Big Ed, what the hell are you doing? You're on a show called 90 Day Fiance. You know everybody's watching you like the police. Whether you like it or not. Whether we like it or not. People are watching you. So every move you make is going to be scrutinized. You can't be hitting on your exes without someone knowing this. Damn. I hope all is well. You look amazing. She says thanks. He says I want to come to the Philippines again to see you if you're open. Wow. Okay, you didn't fully read everything. I'll, I'll finish reading. Rose says, yes, you can come here. You're welcome here. And there's one thing I hate about this text. Two things. One, that it exists. Two, oh my God, how is it that the American man is spelling the word wrong? How are you the one getting the grammatical stuff wrong? And Rose is getting it right. And <sighs> in, in, in a twist of events, Rose, for some reason, says, yes, you can come here. You're welcome here. I'm 50% sure she didn't mean it in the capacity of coming here in a romantic sense, but I'm also 50% unsure at the fact that she even wants anything to do with him after their relationship had broken up. Maybe she's just a nice person. I don't know. I wouldn't be so happy if Big Ed did the stuff that he did to me. But anyway, the fact that she said yes is not that relevant. The point is this man didn't remember texting her and clearly texted her. You just said that you were in communication with her. Liz, sit down. Jesus Did Christ. He not God, what? Big Ed is like acting like he's in the right here. Liz, sit down. Just calm down. Uh, this can be explained. I wanted to have sex. Just say that he, he did. hasn't spoken to her. Did you say yes or no? So then this happens. And this is um, how you know Big Ed is the ultimate D-bag of all time. If you didn't already think that, which I'm sure you did. Did you or did you not just say, I have not spoken to her? Me no speak English. What the f***? What the f***? You know what? It's not something to joke about, Ed. It is, because she's, this is her. This ah, blah, blah, blah. What in the dross flexing on you that it has a longer neck than you, Big Ed? Are you talking about? Explain to me how you can make a joke out of it and say, me no speaker English. Like you're somehow from the Philippines now, and that's racial as well. But seriously, I don't know how Liz wouldn't just leave and never talk to him again after that. If if I caught someone and I was like, hey, you texting your ex? And they were like, oh no, I don't know, spaghetti. Oh, then I'd be like, no, off. this is know, ridiculous. Spaghetti. I don't even know. You're not even Italian. Know, you're barely white. Oh, so no, Big Ed is acting like a baby back bitch right now. How can you accept this as a response that is so lame for anyone, let alone a 56-year-old who cannot take accountability for his actions. That is the most slimy thing that I've seen all tell. He's clearly texting someone, trying to get somewhere, and not owning up to it at all. This is the point in which you have to leave a relationship. No matter how much you love someone, you have to be like, if you can't respect me, if you can't even respect yourself, you're not going to respect me. I'm a leave. I'm a dip. I'm a moonwalk out of here. You gotta do that. This is who Liz is. You just lied hey, to Liz. everybody right here. Liz, what are you thinking right now? Tired of all the lies. Then leave. Can someone tell her that she could do better? Can someone please instill that confidence in her and be like, Lady, you know, I've been, I've been watching you. I'm not sure why you're attracted to light bulbs in human form, but you can actually date humans, so I don't know, man. Maybe you should go and get one. Well, first of all, I'm not lying to Liz. Um, I'm not denying the fact that um, I was on a dating website a year and a half ago. I admitted that. Right. So this was when they were broken up. This is the classic Ross and Rachel we want on a break, except instead of Ross, we have Big Ed. And the only thing he's breaking is chairs and apparently hearts for some reason, which I didn't think was possible. But 
Yeah, so he took the we were on a break thing to the ultimate and said, all right, while we're on a break, I'm going to go on some dates and also try and rekindle my flame with my ex. Fiance, not my ex-girlfriend, the person whom I was to be married to. If, if you ask me, and I'm no psychologist, that would be a bitch behavior. I didn't remember if I had texted Rose or not, and Liz and I were broken up, but I... It I'm seems not, like I, you're not doing anything When I tell Liz love. I love her, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm lying. Yo, know, how can you love someone, and then as soon as you break up with them, not even like a, a week after, be on a dating site. If your heart is broken, mend it. You can't end this relationship so fast and start a new one, especially if you say you love them. If you don't love them, maybe. But if you really love someone, you don't do that to them. That is bitch behavior. Come on, <laughs> give me a clap, someone. There's no one here. Up ten times, I don't even know, honestly, if we were together or not. I hate the fact that Big Ed does this, by the way. I really hate the fact that he'll be like, "We broke up ten times." When every time they broke up, it's been Big Ed doing the breaking up. So he's broken up with her, and then had to say, "We've broken up," as if it was a joint venture, as if they're in some movie production together. Okay, and the fact that you're gonna say that, then victimize yourself, and be like, "I don't know where we were," is just. Can we all say it? This is like Jerry Springer. Bitch behavior. You are do you being a bitch. Dr. Fuller should have said that to you. Really. Because I just don't think that anything that he's saying is palatable, even in the least. It's 100% Big Ed's fault at this point. When I ask you a simple question like, did you reach out to Rose? You told but me no three times that you didn't remember. Get it, Sean? Sean, for once is actually taking a stand. She's not normally biased. She's not even normally there. She's like in the clouds thinking about what dinner she had two weeks ago. But she came to life today. She came to play. She's actually calling Big Ed out on his bullshit because someone lied to her. You see, if someone does something not to Sean, she doesn't care. But if Sean gets lied to, oh my God, you're getting fried to, boy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you with the piranhas. Sean does not take any prisoners. Unless, of course, you don't talk about her and then she forgets everything and she's on a show and every now and again she's like, oh, and let's go to our new contestant. Um, I'm sorry, old contestant? Um, big Ed. I might have been mistaken. Right now he's just upset because even his ex fiance just called him out. Rose, do you think that Ed is still interested in having a relationship with you? So then Sean asked Rose if Big Ed is still interested in her, to which she says, yeah, I think so. Uh, if he wasn't in a relationship, he'd probably pursue her more, which is, again, still slimy, but not necessarily untrue, I guess. She's saying he's interested, but he's um, in, in a relationship right now. I kind of wish that we got more on Rose's side. The fact that the only text that we have is her saying, yeah, you can come, instead of her saying, no, I don't want anything to do with this relationship is like 10% concerning. Like, I don't want to completely remove her from the blame, especially if she knows that he's in a relationship. And you wouldn't necessarily do that. It's not your responsibility, per se, to be like, hey, remember, you're in a relationship. But it is sort of your responsibility to be like, well, I don't want to open any doors that are already closed. I don't want to lead you on. So the fact that nobody really is saying anything about that it's kind of a little weird, but yeah, I really don't think we should be taking the blame off of Big Ed right now. This man is uh, guttable. I don't think I have any more respect. Mm. Okay, so then Liz says that she doesn't have any more respect, which I would have, I, you know, I'd love to believe, but this is like the 10th time. And Liz, I, I hate to break it to you, but you didn't have respect the first, the second times. By the seventh time, you got to tell yourself that I'm leaving. This is like you eating a Twinkie every time that you're on a diet. You can't say one more bite. At some point, you're going to have to be like, mm-mm, and walk away from that Twinkie. And Big Ed is your Twinkie. Uh, Let me have my ring back. Oh. Oh. Wow. wow. What the wow. fuck? Oh, my God. No, no, Big Ed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy's right. Oh no, bigot. Why you do this? Perfect. Uzman, thank you. I cannot believe this shit. In a twist of events that everyone saw coming, Big Ed again asked for his ring back. I don't know if this is the Lord of the Rings and Big Ed is the evil dude. This guy's a bitch. 
Sorry, I, I don't have any other words to say. It's a hot day, I'm boiling up, I'm burning to death. And so is Big Ed, because we're both in hell. If you're going to ask a woman for your ring back ten times, don't give it to her again. Don't even give her your number if you're going to ask for her ring back that many times, okay? Please. This is your call, and you need to stop leading her on. She's a young girl who is somewhat impressionable. She's had some bad relationships, and she has a kid. And you need to be the bigger person, not just physically, bro. You need to actually be like, well, I don't think that I'm ready for someone like you. Maybe I'm just not good enough yet. Maybe you're too good. Maybe I'm too good. Whatever it is, I really don't think we're right for each other. But I keep asking you for my ring back. I keep being an idiot, and I need to stop and figure myself out. You can't keep doing this to her. You're emotionally damaging her. Emotional, Emotional damage. damage! I can't do it like him. Oh, Damn. wow. You're a dick. No, no, big ass. He got caught. I just want to move on. Liz, Ed, I I'm not exactly sure what to say. Big surprise, Shona doesn't know what to say. Sean, can you just chill and say something real? Yo, man, I am not sure what to say. Uh, a man just asked for, uh, you know, you ring back, you guys were supposed to be engaged, uh, but, uh, no, no, I'd like to thank you, Rose, for coming and talking with thank us today. You. I really appreciate it. Good seeing you again. Me. I'd like to thank you, Rose, for exposing this man for what he truly is, yet again. <laughs> and and, and I, I'd like to thank the show, 90 Day Fiance, for finding another victim to add to the Big Ed tally. When we come back, Liz is going to break up with him again. And by the break, we'll have 20 different breakups. So hopefully this relationship will be in the Guinness World Record for most breakup and makeups of all time. All right, see you then guys, I'm Sean. <laughs> I can't, I'm not saying anything else. I think everybody could use a break after that. So then they take a break because it's so overwhelming, the fact that Big Ed and Liz came there engaged and then literally 10 minutes later, he said, give me my ring back. And now they're back to the same thing. So everyone's taking a break. They're like, oh, this is crazy. And now they're going to discuss it behind the scenes. I didn't want to hand it back, but he asked for it. And I know our situation's crazy, like living separately now, but it's been the best our relationship's ever been. Girl? Are you kidding me? I'm sorry, are you kidding me? This is the best your relationship's been? I'm sorry, I'm talking to a computer, but are you serious? This is the best it's been? This is the best? Hand my ring back? Hand in my resignation to your love? Are you kidding me? Liz, if this is the best you guys have ever been, get out. Watch Jordan Peele movies. Nope, get out. Leave. Does he, does he have a movie called Leave? He should make a movie called Oh My God, Woman. Look at yourself and then leave because you're worth it. That's, I know it's a long title, but really, I'm sure he could do something great with it. This is the best your relationship's been when you guys are living apart and not talking to each other and then coming over once every two days. That's not a relationship. That is detention with benefits. So, if you and him were in the Titanic, it would sink due to weight restrictions, so. Oh, forget it, Boyle. You just like how the angels fly out of your arse is getting next to the likes of her. I was pissed, and I just sat there and went, Oh my God. So yeah, I'm like, I'll take the ring. I, it probably wasn't appropriate, but. I'm like, <laughs> ah, when you start making horse sounds <laughs> as a uh, winning argument, you know you've lost. I'm like, Pfft. I'll just give it, I'll just say, take back the ring. <laughs> I was like, frick it. I didn't know what to do. So I just said, give me the ring. I'm gonna be here all my life. I said to her, I said. <laughs> Today, it just showed me, look, you don't support me. I owe her an apology, though, for asking for the ring back. That's sad. It sucks. I know, it sucks. She's going to be fine. I can't understand your accent. I like how he confides in Jenny, someone who also thinks the relationship is terrible. I feel like he just found her and started talking, and she was like, ah, oh, yeah, no, that's bad. Oh, yeah, oh, that's terrible. Wow, really bad relationship. Big Ed doesn't even have, like, any friends on the show. Oh, I'm sorry, I just, it, I feel like it's very hard for him to connect to anyone because who could really empathize with him and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm in that exact same position, bro. I remember messaging hella goals and then blaming her and also victimizing myself. Nobody would say that. Nobody's going to be on your side for this, man. It's crazy. 
But those are a bunch of bull crap. Yeah, so what's your, what's your intention after this? Are you going to keep doing this or what? Man, and then that deep voice guy who sounds like he's Russian but isn't starts intervening and starts being the psychologist like he's a Russian doctor full. Well, what are you going to do about it, Deliz? You're telling me that you are going to stay with shit man all your life? This bull crap. I like how he swears and then censors himself after. Ah, shit. It's bull crap. Um, he seem like he's that's what a I, dirt bag, you know? That's what I don't know. Meanwhile, Big Ed is outside literally walking like a Lego block. I just watched the Lego movie. Pretty good. This dude walks like he's Emmett from Lego movie. And I, I enable it. I keep going back to it. So don't get married. Wait, 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 wait. Liz said she enables it. She knows she's an enabler. Oh my God. You know this? What are you doing then? This is bad. This, the first step is admitting. The second step is doing something about it. It doesn't actually work if you don't do the second step. You can't be like, yeah, I have cocaine addiction. Cocaina. No. Flour. You can't just do that. That doesn't make it any better. Admitting it and not doing anything is probably worse than being like, no, I don't, I don't even have anything. I'm fine. You got to do something about it. If you just keep saying, I, I, it's, I enable, I'm an enabler. I enable this behavior. I let it happen. Don't let it happen. Do something about it. Nike, just do something about it, brother. That's, that's Nike's slogan from now on. It, it wouldn't last. Oh. There's no way. Which makes you to be attractive to him? Like, he really is good to my daughter. That's good. That's what makes you attracted to him? He's good to your daughter? So is a pediatrician. You, you, so is a clown. Are you kidding me? This man is good to your daughter? That's the reason you love him? He's got The bar's got to be a little higher. I know that he's short, but you can't set it that low. I don't know. I just, uh, you deserve better, so just telling that. You both need to work on communicating better. Try to make the other person I know I'm not hurt, perfect. You know, we fight like all the time. Yeah. After they're talking and they're in their own green room, a big Ed comes in walking like the evil Lego block he is, and everyone is uh, shaken up. He's like that one kid in class that farts a lot and nobody else wants to tell him, so they all just sit in silence. Danny, I have to say something. You just keep doing it, man. It's really, people have died. All right, part two. They're back from the break. Sean has had a coffee. She's rejuvenated. They reanimated a corpse. She's back to life. Everyone's uh, back on the floor. They start up again. Well, that brings us to the end of our first day in the studio. I lied. This is the end of it. They didn't talk about anything else that whole episode. It's an hour and 30 minutes each time, okay? I have to sift through this. They actually, for the first time on 90 Day Fiance History, have had the cameras follow these people after they are done with the special and they go into their rooms and they follow them. So basically, this is the equivalent of no privacy or WWE backstage pass. Suck my ass. So that's it. What a day. I come here engaged and I'm leaving single. Thank you so much. Does that conflict with your regular normal days, brother? Is that different from your other Wednesdays? I've been through this 10 times, but this time... I had six other couples just attacking me nonstop, completely taking Liz aside. No, that's victimization, you big fat baby. That's not true. Nobody fully attacked you. They attacked the situation, and your doing was the thing that leads people to not like you. It's your actions that create the person you are. Nobody doesn't want to like you. I think everybody starts off in the middle, like I said, and then you on your way to douchebaggery. Like, it's the stuff that you do that proves whether you're good or bad, loyal or disloyal. Everything that you do has a consequence, and you just keep doing that and then expecting people to somehow resonate or sympathize or even side with you, which is delusional at best. I don't know how you reeled this uh, a, a beautiful black man into your corner. And I gotta say, every time I look at him, he looks like the complete love child of 50 Cent and Jason Derulo. Just look at them together. This is the same. This dude is just 50 Derulo. And uh, he just seems like a dude who somehow is nice enough to not hate you. But you seem to think that he is your best friend now because he is not hating you. 
and Liz just stood there and let me take it and then and then jumped on the bandwagon. Okay, well that is classic narcissism right there, saying that uh, Liz let me take it as if she's supposed to defend you from you hurling insults at her and telling her to give back the ring. You have sunk to the bottom of the barrel, my friend, and you are now sipping the juice from it. I just don't think that you can even come back from this. This is just, this is terrible behavior, to say the least. You need to own up to your mistakes be like, I'm wrong. I'm sorry that I treated you like that. That was absolutely devious and stupid of me. And that's it. There's really no other things to say than that. Once you messed up this bad, you need to just apologize and be like, I hope you can forgive me and see that I really do love you. I uh, just sometimes my head goes bonky boink. I mean, the emotions are kind of starting to hit. I mean, we just looked at a wedding venue last week and set our wedding date. I mean, the emotions are kind of starting to hit. I mean, we just looked at a wedding venue last week and set our wedding date. John Travolta meme, what? What? They they didn't say this in the tell all. She they set a wedding date? They actually got a date confirmed? And then he said, give my ring back? And then she did? And you didn't tell anyone? And the reason you didn't tell anyone is because you knew that it wasn't going to last because there was a chance that this was going to happen. So you knew it was going to happen, which is really bad. Oh my God, you suck. What the hell? You knew that it wasn't going to work out. That's why you didn't tell anyone. Because when people set a date for marriage, they tell people, Oh my God, you guys prepared for failure and it happened. This is the sign that you need to leave. There's no way if you're preparing for the worst that you can say that this relationship is going to work. <laughs> What do you drink anyway? You drink Everything. Oh, and I am. Feeling, man? I'm still uh, kind of in shock. I think. Yeah. You know, I'm. I was mad. So then they go to the taxi cabs in New York to a penthouse where they'll have drinks and have sort of an after party, after de stress, whatever you call it, and people will film. Uh, the girls go in one car, Big Ed and the man go in another car. And I feel sorry for this man because he has to deal with Big Ed not only looking like a hamster in the camera, but when he turns to the side, he has to fully turn his body. And it must be very awkward to like look at someone and have them fully face you the whole ride. I, I don't know how I would feel about that. Yeah, I think that you guys just have to learn to fight without going below the belt. I love your advice from this. He really likes this guy. He, this guy is everything Big Ed wants to be. Tall, black, and I uh, have solid advice. Um, but also the guy basically says uh, the epitome of what needs to happen in the relationship if you're going to communicate. And even when you fight, because everyone does fight, it's inevitable and it's fine. You don't hit below the belt because you know you love that person and you don't want to say things that you're not going to mean later on and can't take back. This is not no take backsies. Once you say something that hurts, it really does affect the person. So maybe don't. You truly do have a, a strong feeling for it. Like you truly want to be with her. You truly do want love. I do. Like, you know. No, this is the only time you're gonna hear him say I do first of all is to the black tool man because he's so in love with him. But really, he does want love. That's the difference. And you hit it on the nail. He wants love. He wants to be loved, but he doesn't know necessarily how to love back and to give love because he is a controlling, manipulative person who really just wants things his own way. And if you are really and truly in love, you have to learn to give more than you receive. It's not about what you get, it's about what you can give. To really and truly be in love is something like that. It, it doesn't mean what can someone do for me, it means what can I do for the other person to make them happy. And if you can't look at someone and really feel that about them, you're probably not really in love. That might be the harsh truth, but it's probably going to save you time in the long run because these two are not in love. Big Ed just wants to be loved. And I think Liz genuinely loves Big Ed, which is a very bad combination. So I feel sorry for her, but I feel horrible that he exists in her life. It's, it's just not good for them. You know, it might be too late. I want to just give up. But then it's like a month later, then you're like, man, you know, <laughs> what did I do? Yeah, what did I do? Yeah. I'm going to apologize to Liz. So um, in a weird twist of events, the uh, man somehow convinces Big Ed to apologize to Liz. He sort of understands that maybe what he did is not actually what he really wanted to say. And um, 
I guess he's going to apologize to her now, so let's see how that goes, because in the past, that's been so, so, so good and worked so well. I'm not sure what he actually does to make Liz come back to him. I don't know what I would have done. Jihan, it looked like a woman. The last message I saw with the timestamp was the day before he proposed to me. What? What do you do? What? What? A day before he proposed to you? What did he propose that you go out to dinner? Did he propose a toast? Did he propose an acquisition? What? If he proposed marriage, then this, the, you can't do this to yourself, Liz. You can't look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I'm with a guy who can propose to me and a day later then hit on someone else. You have to have more self-worth and be like, I am definitely worth more. I have a good job at a restaurant. I have a kid. I'm young. I can go on a dating app and probably get like hundreds of other guys. I can explore my options. I can wait and I can find someone who's better. You have to do that in order to have some self-respect because if you don't respect yourself, how is this man going to respect you? And clearly, clearly this man does not respect you. So you need to earn that back and, and not let him take it from you. That's the issue here. I'm sorry, but if someone's going to propose and a day later hit on other people, that's just not good enough. Oh that one you read? <sighs> yeah, yeah. Oh, is exactly right. Thank you, old hag woman. Oh. I like to sit down here. So then at the party, Big Ed seeks Liz to apologize, but not before getting a kebab and some wine because he is uh, a glutton and a person who can't actually put his priorities first instead of, I hurt the love of my life or I hurt the person I love. Let me see if they're okay. It's, oh my God, kebabs. Yeah, let me see if she's okay. Oh my God, they got wine. What a dump. I'm just kidding. Oh no. Hey, how are you? Oh, oh don't fall with your wine. I know, right? Yep, he then trips on nothing and then sits down and tries to talk some sense into people. Tonight is a huge... A huge eye opener. Tonight was the. I'm sorry. If tonight was the eye opener, well, then you are Ray Charles or something. You have really not been seen very often. Okay. You need to get your eyes checked. You need an optometrist to examine your that, your eye holes because tonight cannot be the eye opener. Can, tonight is the eye closer. Tonight is the closer of this relationship, and the opener of a new one. Okay. Please, let this kebab eating motherfucker go. He, he, he needs some time to think about his decision, okay? He needs some time to improve on himself. I just know that everyone that I spoke to gave me their opinion, told me I deserved better, told me that they would never speak to their partner that way. Yeah, you, and that's the thing, Liz. You don't even need people to tell you that. You yourself should be able to figure this out because we're not going to be here all the time. The cameras are not always going to be on you and you need to learn to make these decisions yourself. But for right now, everybody's pretty much putting it to you on a silver spoon. We're telling you what, what the next step is from there. It's up to you. You're, you've got a, a lot of upside to you. So may, maybe just figure that one out, please. Whoever's cut you down, I feel sorry that they've done that to you. And I feel sorry that you feel like that, but it's not true. You can do you. Girl, power. Usually I wouldn't have been down here, y'all. I've been on the phone. <laughs> the fuck was that? Oh my God. Torn my eyes away from the screen for one second. An old white lady doing rabies movements. What the heck? Is that how she eats ass? What is this? Today, I was so embarrassed. I'm gonna be embarrassed for years. That's Angela and she dates someone called Michael and apparently lots of people have wanted me to do an episode on that because she is apparently certifiably insane and I've seen her for a total of 10 seconds and can agree. So if that's something that you'd like, please leave it down in the comments, let me know and I'll take a look at it really. Because I don't cry. I'm sorry. In the midst of Angela doing her rabies uh, reenactment, Big Ed pulls Liz to the side. And Liz, remember, said she would not talk to him immediately before even Big Ed can ask, says there's a room upstairs. Do you want to talk? Liz, stop. Control yourself. Please, woman. I don't want to do another season of this. Please. Maybe I was beaten. I think there's an upstairs. Oh, upstairs? Do you want to go up there? Yeah, you want to go? I just want to say, within those two lines, um, you can see Big Ed's priorities. Baby, I'm sorry. I was beaten. It's back to him. Sorry. Sorry, you hurt. I was beaten. Not sorry. Can I please know how you're feeling? Can I... 
can you explain what you're feeling? Can I listen? Can I be there for you? It's, I'm sorry, I was under pressure and I'm just doing all these things and it's, it's all, everyone's ganging up on me. It just shows the type of person he is. And at 56, if you, this is how you're going to talk and like act. I, I don't know if you're ever changing, honestly. I want to apologize to you. You can't just break up with me and go make these stupid choices a day or two later and then try to come back like... I was drowning. Like physically or... I did not see you in the water. I think you would be the opposite of drowning, you buoyant... And I felt like you were stepping on my head. And the one person I wanted to... Was there any desperation in you saying, give me back the ring? Was there any need or necessity for you to say that when someone was questioning why you messaged someone on a dating site and also messaged your ex fiance to say, can I come? Are you open to me coming? How is that you being stepped on? How is that you drowning? The only thing that you want to drown in is pussy. Your pussy? Are you kidding me? I don't believe that you can play the victim card at all. This is not Yu-Gi-Oh, bro. That card is banned in your deck. And I thought that was you. But I can't do that when it was a lie. You could have just told me you reached out. Yeah, I don't even remember the text. How can you not remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, would be really good on a reality show, I know. Because I start off, like, calm. And then when someone does something that's enragingly stupid, I just lose it. What happened, bro? Is this the notebook? Are you the old lady from the notebook? Do you want me to hit you with the notebook so you can remember? What is wrong? What would you need to access those memories, brother? All you, Because if you have a text that shows the history of your conversation, you don't even need to remember it. You just open the thing and you're like, whoa, can't believe I did it. Liz, I want you to take accountability for yourself. What? You have to. You want her to take accountability? How is she supposed to take accountability? What is she supposed to do? Let you do this and be okay with it? This is crazy. You're crazy for saying she needs to take accountability. Look at yourself in the big, round, rotund mirror, man. The fact that you got caught and you still denied it and it was I right there. I didn't get there. caught in anything. You act like I'm trying to lie to you. I'm not trying to lie to you. No. But when I don't lie, and here I'm trying to defend myself. Number one, I don't lie. That's a lie. Everyone lies. I lied yesterday. I said to someone I was seven foot six and they said, wow, that's short. And I said, yep, that's what it looks like. I didn't actually say that. That was the lie. I'm crazy, but I'm not big Ed. At least I admit it. God damn. And you started to perform. I'm performing? You were performing. You're acting like a little eternal. Oh my God, they're playing the, they're playing the music that's indicative of Liz turning into the Hulk. Whenever someone repeats themselves, in, in a rhetorical word, like, I think you're being a baby. I'm being a baby? You know it's all wrong. I'm just a performance. Oh. Pathetic apology okay, when you're well, saying that I'm performing. You were performing, Liz. Yep, Sorry. you know what? That's how I felt. And that is how the apology goes. So Big Ed tried to apologize and ended up saying that she needs to take accountability and that she is a performer, to which she leaves. Good for you. Congratulations, Liz. I'm trying to tell him, look, it's not about the messages that were sent. It's the fact that it was presented to you and you still denied it and you still pretend to be stupid. God damn. She even said it's not about the messages you sent. I would. That, that's a contention point for me. If, if someone I loved was also trying to hit up their ex one day in between telling me that they want to marry me, I'd probably be like, hmm, the content of what you say does not align with how you seem to feel about me. Liz seems to forgive him for a lot of things, but the fact that he can't even like tell her that he remembers communicating this or own up to the fact that, yeah, in between our break, I did this, is probably the worst of it all. It just shows that they're probably not going to have good communication. He's going to continue lying and she's going to continue either enabling or forgiving it or trying to forget about it without holding him accountable. So they'll never change. This relationship is a failure waiting to happen. And I'm surprised that it's been this long. It's like a dormant volcano. And every time someone's like, Ooh, mm -mm, just a little jizz came out, little volcano jizz. Mm. It's going to erupt one day. I think Ed can run his mouth 
but he can't handle taking the heat when it comes to him. Oh no, he just told me I'm a big performer. I'm performing everything. This is the one part that I don't like about Liz as well. I'm not gonna give Big Ed all of the blame even though he deserves all of it and more. Liz does this, like she'll say things like, I'm not gonna talk to him. Then she talks to him and then he does something she doesn't like. And then she goes back to her group of friends and says that he's uh, a baby back bitch. And they all agree with her and they're like, man, you should dump him, you should do this. And she says yes, and then goes back to him again. And it's an endless cycle caused by her not being able to stand up for herself. And I know it's not easy. I get that it's not easy. I get that it could be very hard. But at the same time, you can't keep doing this and expecting your friends and everyone else to come to your rescue. At some point, you have to say to yourself, this is on me. I need to make this big, huge decision and I need to stand by it. If this is really not my person, then it's not my person. If he truly was your person, he'd change. He'd make the, the commitment, the effort. He'd actually show you that he's worth fighting for. And this man ain't worth fighting for. He said what? He's mad at the fact. He up. When I like, can't hear anymore about B egg because he <laughs> pisses me off and <laughs> him because he up. That's us. That's everyone in life. That lady is how we all feel. She just explained how everyone feels in a more Russian accent, unless of course you're Russian, in which case, phenomenally well. She did it perfectly. He breaks up with me again. He goes talks to other girls. When we were in Arkansas with his family, he was DMing girls on Instagram. You break that motherfucking phone until gets tired of buying a new one. No, 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 Angela, you don't break that motherfucking phone. You don't do that. You confront him, tell him that I don't like you talking to other people when you're supposed to be committed to me and then you leave making him realize all of the shit that he's missing to then see that you're living a better life and miss you instead of breaking his phone and then he can sue you for damaging his property and also you look like a crazy person angela is not giving you the best advice she's just giving you the crazy batshit advice that everybody wants to take but shouldn't. You can't defend when the proof is there. All right, OJ Simpson lawyer. Man, Angela, really, I'm, she's making a case for me wanting to do an episode on her. You can't defend when the proof is there. You, you gotta break his phone. She's like an angry Dr. Full female version. I love him so much. Don't need his help. I want him. I love him. I do not want to be used. I'm not dealing with this anymore. Yeah, but so does he love you? Does he want you? Does he truly want you? Just because you want something, it doesn't mean that they want you back or that that thing wants you back. Not everything works out. And, and, and this is the hard, crappy reality of the situation. If you're going to do this 10 times in a row, if you're going to constantly bring up problems that are not changing, because Big Ed texting girls and being with girls is a common thing. It's been happening. And the fact that nobody seems to realize that he's not changing, despite having therapy and a hundred other things and claiming that he is changing. It's like Charlie Sheen on Two and a Half Men or Charlie Sheen in real life. It is what it is. And you're just going to either have to go along with it or move on. Because Big Ed is not changing and you cannot expect this man to do that. So you need to get up and leave because he's probably never going to respect you because he barely respects anyone. Yeah, for the first. Meanwhile, at uh, the bar, uh, there's a guy called Jovi who's there with the non-Russian Russian and also Big Ed eventually makes his way there. But Liz also goes to get another drink and everyone starts talking over there. Some old lad and all that Honestly, I don't know, like... I will say, I know you would never talk to your wife that way, and I think, you know, I would, I would do the same thing to my wife. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's not even discussable. Yeah. There's no, like, there's no... Yeah, it's crazy. It's not even discussable, bro. Shut the... And there's not even small head is a shithole. And you? I'm not sure about you. I'm still on. The jury is out. The verdict is out on you. You remind me of me, but short. And he reminds me of me, but even shorter. Like toddler, teenager, me. Sorry, what was your question? Liz. What are you actually talking about, you? He would never talk to his wife the way that Ed talked to you today, and I would never do that to my wife. So seeing that today really bothered me, and that's why I stuck up for you in that situation, because... He's like one of those uh, goody goods. Liz, listen, like, I know me and Andre, we are not on the best of terms, but honestly, what happened to you? Oh my God, I would never do that. And that's why I stuck up for you and should deserve the brownie points. And if you ever find yourself in a position where you want to be in a threesome, you just call me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. I don't think that should happen to anyone. I really do love him. I put up with so much <laughs> I've lost all my friends. So what do you think, right? You gave him back the ring today, like. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can't 
blame Big Ed for this. I can't blame him for this on the grounds that you shouldn't be giving up your friends. You should know that this is not okay. If you have to give up your friends and yourself for someone, you should know that maybe it's not worth it. Because if you have to change to the point that you are not yourself or you feel uncomfortable in the person that you are, then it's not on the other person because sometimes they don't even know that they're doing that. And not everybody's doing this maliciously. What you need to understand is that there are going to be times and places and people that affect you. They change you. People shape you. Life is like that. But you have to figure out who can and can't change you and in what way they can and can't. People should change you for the better. And you should be able to make compromises. But that doesn't include losing all of your friends or making yourself feel like this is the only person in your life. That is a road to a poisonous relationship. And for you to be saying that, it's not his fault. It's your fault for letting that happen. You can't let that happen. You got to stop it before that happens. What was going on? You were just like, okay, here. With all the disrespect, no, I don't want to marry him. And then he's like, all right, give me my ring back. What was I going to do? No. You just give up and walk away. Big Ed then walks behind and the only time he's ever been sneaky in his life and they talk about him not knowing that he's behind them and like Batman with eight bat suits on he pulls up and then he starts talking back. No, I wouldn't give up and no, walk away. Come on. It, would, it would take time. Don't be that. such a pussy. Oh, a 56 year old man calling maybe a 30 something year old man a pussy. Woo, we can really, that is just good work Big Ed. Listen to me, you, Listen. Do, you do not talk to First women like that. Here's what happened today. I had six of you jumping on me. And the one person that I would expect that would support me is that guy who you talked to in the cab, Here's right? Him. 50 Derulo. Starts acting like an attorney, goes over and reads a text. I'm sorry, I had to slow that down in between his rants. Uh, two spittles came out and I had to slow it down so you could all share my pain. I'm sorry about that. Basically, no, no, calling no, no, no. me a liar. When, when you're reading I don't, messages I don't, I don't between hear your ex, and I and told her, I go, Liz, you're performing. When she tells My favorite part of any reality show is when everyone talks over each other, and we have to decipher what anyone is saying, like the Da Vinci Code for assholes. I love this part. There you go. It's performance. No, because you're performing, I'm not lying. and don't run away. It's the truth. No, it's, when no. your I want ex you to try. I want you to stop acting like a prima donna. This is the sign of a good relationship, guys. This is perfectly great. This is just how you know it's gonna work. Okay. <laughs> one person has a kid who doesn't talk to them. The other one has a growing kid who probably won't talk to them if this keeps up. And, you know, both of them have friends who don't talk to them anymore because they're in this toxic relationship that pulls everybody in and stresses everyone out to the point that they don't want to be involved in it. It's like a black hole of biblical proportions. And they still are in a relationship. Guys. Stop it. Get some help. I wanted to be with her. Stop you this little never give a about how I feel. It's about how you feel. Why do you keep coming back? Why do you keep coming back? Please, can I have one answer and then I will leave? Y'all can't have a healthy relationship Please. if you break- Shut up, shut up, shut the f up. I really want to know. Today was about you performing to make me look bad. You Bitch, gotta you make me carry your luggage to the airport. Performer. So yeah. Yeah. Damn. God damn. Woo. When your girl calls you a bitch, bitch, you make me carry your luggage because you're weak. you weak as f bro. I don't know how to feel about that. Is he physically weak or is she just like saying that? Whenever she gets mad, she says some really, like some really horrible things to this man. She has, says he has a small dick, he's short, he's fat, he's ugly. Oh, wow. When she gets mean, she really gets mean. Bye. I don't care. Wow, so that happens. Liz leaves after storming out and getting angry and Big Ed says bye, like a complete D-bag. And uh, as usual, the relationship is again, not just on rocky waters, but sinking below the ocean. Ed is such a piece of that doesn't deserve my love or anybody's love. And the only unconditional love he's gonna have is with the two dogs that we were supposed to share together. Please keep that same energy. Please, Liz. I hope that when we watch part three of this tell all, because there's four parts, that she actually keeps to this and is like, there is nobody who's going to love him. I'm too good for him. Just keep that same energy and move on with it. Because you, you need him to know that he's missing out. You need him to realize that, oh, I've been wrong. Let me actually change myself because he's not going to. Like a baby who's two years old, he's not going to change himself. 
You know? Are you kidding me? And then Angela eats her, so that's sad. Do you know how hard it is? Ed, I would just tell you, like, now that she's not here in the room. But first of all, you. Ah, Ed, I'd just like to tell you now that she's not here, like, you know, now I'm gonna really, the gloves are really gonna come off right now. I, I think what you did was uh, uh, inappropriate, bro. Why didn't you say anything when they were fighting, man? You don't know my situation. I don't, and let me. And you're shooting your mouth off. You don't know my situation. I'm not shooting my mouth off. So shut the up. Where is Ed? Let me, let me say what I'm about to say. Go ahead and say. Pussy. Oh, dang, big Ed. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Big Ed is ready for a fight. He didn't even finish one glass of Malbec. He's two foot shorter than everyone else and he is ready to go. It's like a little mini raging bull. But in the meantime, before he can even start a fight with Jovi, Angela comes in. After eating Liz, she's ready to have another war. He's sitting there talking oh. about me. Like, you're gonna go to a strip club with him and you're married. Excuse me. Next time on- Oh! We got, we got cliffhanged. This is the second time they did this to us. I'm getting used to it now. Angela ends by saying, excuse me, which is probably the two most devious words that Angela could ever say, especially when your back is facing her. This woman could have a knife, a gun, her teeth, anything. I don't know what she's going to do, but I would love to have a bet to see because I genuinely don't know. Winning comment, I will pin on this. So please tell me what you think Angela is going to do to Big Ed and I will pin the comment that I think is the winner or the one that gets the most likes. So I think she's going to throw something at him, maybe like throw her wine at him. But I genuinely also think she could be doing something worse. So I'm not sure, but I'm going to go with that. Um, I think I've talked about this relationship enough for one episode. It's very clear cut that these two are not going to work out. I don't know why I even thought for a second that they could. Every time they even show a glimpse of them being okay together, they show 10 more glimpses of them being horribly ugly to each other. And you just don't want a relationship that's this ugly. So um, I think it's best that they just go their separate ways. We got two more parts. I hope by the next part or the part after they finally realize that and decide to make that a thing. But let's see where it goes from here. Hopefully you guys join me on the next episode. It's been 35 degrees Celsius, so I'm melting like a snowman in a uh, sun ray. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a good time and uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves and bye. Also stay cool. Unless it's winter, stay warm. I love you. Thanks for watching today's video and don't forget to try out High Rise through the link in my description. Thanks.